Hey guys, I'm going to present to you my most recent care plan, which was a 48-year-old female who was getting a bilateral lumbar microdiscectomy of her L4 to L5. She initially had gone into her plan, uh, one of her physician's offices and had excruciating back pain, debilitating back pain, and she ended up having lumbar disc herniation, so that's why we're doing the microdiscectomy. Um, so, like I said, she's 48 years old, allergies to Remicade, which you just get the rash from. Uh, her ASA score is a 2. Her total body weight was 75.8 kgs, with a, and her height was 5 feet 8 inches, giving her a BMI of 32.9. Vital signs um, preoperatively were 153 over 82 with a pulse of 112. Respiratory rate is 14, SPO2 97 on urine air. And a temp of 36.7. So we did an airway assessment preoperatively. She had a mound potty of 2, thyromental distance greater than 6. Her interincisor gap was 4 centimeters, and she had full neck range of motion, and there are no impingements there. Systems-wise, so neurologically, she does have back problems and chronic pain, like I mentioned before, and neuromuscular disease, in addition to arthritis and degenerative joint disease. So I am going to do a thorough documentation of any neuromuscular nerve um, injuries or impairments uh, to make sure I document that really well. Psychiatric, she denies any history of psychiatric disorders. Respiratory-wise, she's actually um, pretty healthy in terms of that. She had a low stop bang score of 2, so she's at low risk for OSA. Um, Cardiovascular-wise, so she had a MET score of 7. She talked about how she takes care of her little grandbaby and kind of chases him around the house, but that with this back pain over the last couple of weeks has gotten so bad that she's been not able to do that at all. Um, otherwise, she is pretty healthy and able to do um, pretty good activity. Cardiac, so besides the MET score, she only reported that she had hypertension, which she is on medications for, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, hepatic GI, so she does have liver disease and IBS. Uh, I think her liver disease was just um, like a hereditary, it wasn't like alcoholic or we didn't, we need di we should have dived a little bit further into like what was causing her, her liver disease. Um, IBS and GERD uh, is also what she said she had. She denied any renal disorders. She does have hypothyroidism and type 2 diabetes, which she's on metformin for, which I'll get to in a little bit, and then Synthroid for her hypothyroidism. Um, she, we did a pregnancy test, and she is not pregnant. Uh, she doesn't have any missing loose or chipped teeth. Social history, so she was a former smoker. She quit a few years ago. She said she used to smoke a pack per day for about 10 years, but then she's quit, like I said, the past couple of years. And then she does drink the occasional alcohol more socially than anything. So medication-wise, she's on cyclobenzaprine, diclofenax, Cymbalta, Gabapentin, Genuvia, Synthroid, Linzess, Lisinopril, HCL, and Metformin. So we had her hold all of her medications except for her Synthroid. We instructed her to take that with six of water the morning of surgery. Otherwise, she had been on NPO since the night before, like 10 o'clock, she said. Um, so prior anesthesia, so she's had a few different surgeries. She had a gastric bypass surgery back in 2016. Um, with a, and then she needed a washout and evacuation of a hematoma. She's had a colonoscopy and a cholecystectomy. So she's had anesthesia before, and she said she didn't have any complications with it and denied any family issues as well. Um, so our plan for this case was to do a general anesthesia, um, no blocks or anything like that. She uh, is going to need to be prone and paralyzed to get to the um, spinal cord. And we're just going to use an 18 gauge peripheral IV with a 7.0 EP tube, standard monitors, biz, and, uh, biz monitor, uh, bear hugger, things like that, train of four. Like I said, no block. So we're going to make sure we give her two grams of cefazolam before incision. Uh, and then she was extremely anxious in pre-op, which is partially why her heart rate was probably 100 and 12, I think I said it was. So we gave her two milligrams of Versed. 
Her medic plan, so she does have GERD, we gave her 20 milligrams of Pepsid IV, and then intraoperatively, we did give her Decadron 4 milligrams and Zofran 4 milligrams as well. And then in the PACU, I think I maybe have mentioned it, but she did get sick, so we gave her a rescue dose of Zofran 4 milligrams, which really helped, and she felt a lot better. So for multimodal uh, pain meds, we're going to do fentanyl, ketamine, and magnesium. Um, so we are going to pre-oxygenate her with 100% FiO2, making sure that our end titer is greater than 80 before proceeding with our induction. I'm going to use McGrath 3 and intubate her with a standard ET tube 7.0. My induction medication plan is fentanyl, 150 mics, uh, 100 milligrams of lidocaine, 5 milligrams of rocuronium for the defacicurating dose, propofol 200 milligrams, and sucks um, 140 milligrams. Maintenance, we're going to use sevoflurane, uh, 2 to 2.3%, making sure my flows are at least 2 liters a minute due to compound A formation. And then she's just going to be put on volume control because she is going to need um, PRN rocuronium doses just to keep her still um, and so that the surgeon's able to gain access easier when he makes an incision. So her respiratory weight we're going to set at 12, tidal volumes 450, PIPA 5, and we'll adjust those so we can keep her end tidal kind of in the low 30s. Extubation plan, so just a standard awake extubation, just kind of making sure her SpO2 is greater than 92%. She's taking big enough tidal volumes, 5 mils per keg of ideal body weight at least. She's hemodynamically stable. We're going to do a train of four and make sure that we have full reversal of muscle relaxation. And we did end up giving her 0.2 milligrams of glycopro glycopyrrolate and a milligram of neostigmine for reversal. So then she had a train of four of four to four uh, twitches and no fade upon sustained tetanus. Um, like I said before, she did need that rescue dose after um, extubation. It was probably about 20 minutes. I think we had just kind of landed her in the PACU, wasted our meds, and by that time she was um, starting to vomit. So then we gave her 4 milligrams of Zofran, checked on her a couple hours later, and she was doing great, and she was moving to phase 2. So in terms of her MPO deficit and replacement, um, due to the fact that she said that she had been in bed for the past few days, not eating and drinking because she didn't want to get up and go to the bathroom. We anticipated her deficit to be a lot greater than kind of like our standard calculations. And her um, her pleth on her O2 ended up being like pretty variable. So we knew that she was pretty volume depleted. So based on just standard NPO deficit calculations, we estimated her NPO deficit to be just under 1.4 liters which we replaced with LR during the surgery. Her EVL was only 25. Um, it was only just one level, so there wasn't supposed to be a ton of blood loss, which there wasn't. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All right, give me your feedback. Thanks, guys.